Enrich your experience. Godot is a game changer for developers, offering a flexible, open source platform that makes creating immersive, cross platform games faster and easier. Whether you're just starting out or building your next big project, first, we will start with a new project. Click once on Create button. Project name can be 3D video game. As a default project name, create folder setting can be default. You will have a project path. Renderer can be compatibility renderer option for mobile and web platforms. And click once on create and edit button. Now we see a project window of a Godot new project. We will create one initial 3D game scene. So click once on the 3D scene button. Now we see a 3D game scene where we will start to create our first 3D video game. There are two views for video games in Godot, the orthogonal and perspective. In an orthogonal view, objects are projected onto the 2D screen without any distortion based on distance. In a perspective view, objects are projected in a way that mimics how we perceive the world. We will use an orthogonal camera for 2D games or technical views and a perspective camera for 3D games to give depth and realism. Position in 3D game space. In this 3D scene, we have a root node called Node 3D, and this node is defined in a 3D space by a position, rotation, and the scale. You can change a position on the x-axis with this red line here. If you press on the red arrow, you can change the position of this object, and you will see the change in x-axis. If you want to change something in epsilon axis, you will use something like this, as you see here. For a change in z-axis, you can use light blue line to change the position. When you want to reset the position to beginning, you can press here, and your root object will be on its initial position. If you just want to go one step back in positioning, press Ctrl plus Z, and you will go one step back, creating floor in 3D scene. Now we will learn how to create floor in Godot. Floor need to be top object and scene right below a root node. So we will first add one node. Using this plus sign, we will add child node. This node will be static body. So write static in a search field. You need to find a static body 3D node and click once on the button create. This will create static body node, but the static body needs a shape Shape will be used for collisions, to collide or interact with other object. Select Static Body 3D, and add another node called Collision Shape 3D. So write a collision, and select proper node. This node provides a collision shape for static body. Now we can define a shape for a collision shape node. Go to the inspector window, and find a shape combo box. Select a new box shape. Click again on a box shape, for the size select 10 for X. 0.1 for Epsilon and 10 for Z. You can see a properly set collision shape for static body node. Now, let's add something we can see to the static body. First, add a new node and search for a CSG box 3D node. Then, add it as a child of the static body. For the size, set the X to 10, the Y to 0.1, and the Z to 10. This simple 3D shape is great for testing and building our game. We've created the floor for our 3D video game. Our scene is unsaved. To save a scene, go to Scene in Menu, select Save Scene, and write a scene name for a TSCN file. Click once on the Save button to save it. Camera and Lighting Let's add a 3D camera node to the scene. This is important because in a 3D game, you can only see what's within the camera's view. You can use the camera preview button to check what is visible to the camera. Then, when you run the scene, you'll only see the elements that the camera can view. In this scene, we have a sunlight preview. However, to improve the lighting, we should add additional light sources. Let's use a directional light for this purpose. We'll create a new directional light. This type of light needs to have a position, which we'll adjust as shown. Now, let's preview the scene again. With these adjustments, the scene is looking much better. We can experiment with more settings, but this gives us a solid starting point for the lighting and camera setup. Prototyping Let's start with prototyping. First, we'll zoom in with middle mouse button and rotate a bit by pressing, holding and moving with right mouse button to see the whole scene. 
Then, we'll select the root node and add another CSG box. We can look at the list of nodes and find the 3D CSG box. Click once on Create. A simple object we can use is the CSG box. To put the object on the ground, try pressing the Page Down key. If your floor is set up right, this will let you move the object down to the ground. Once the object is on the ground, you can move it around. To rotate the object, you can use the rotation option or go to the inspector window and find the transform section. In transform, you can change the rotation by yourself or you can reset it to the default rotation. Let's add another CSG box for prototyping. Always remember to select the root node when adding a new one. Next, we'll change some settings for the new box. For example, change the Z value to 2. This will give us a different shape for our prototype. Snap Mode To move a game object accurately in a game scene, you can use Snap Mode. To turn on Snap Mode, click the Use Snap button or press the Epsilon key on your keyboard. Next, choose the object you want to move by clicking on it or selecting it from the scene window. Once you've selected your object, it will move in small, precise steps called snapping. In this example, the object will snap every meter, meaning it will move exactly one meter at a time. CSG Polygon 3D You can create different or more complex CSG, constructive solid geometry, objects for prototyping using a node called CSG Polygon. CSG Polygon lets you extrude a 2D shape into a 3D object or mesh, which is great for prototyping. Here, we have an example of an object, and I'll show you how to use the polygon vector. This is a 2D array of points where you can shape and modify your object. For example, we have four points that form a simple box mesh. If we delete one of these points using the delete button, the object changes, as you can see here. You can make many changes like this to create different shapes. Let's try modifying it further. If we delete another point and adjust the data, we can create a new shape like this one. Game Test Area To complete the creation of a game testing area, we can add some collision shapes around the game floor. First, select your static body, the floor, and add a collision shape. Next, add a box-shaped collision. Set the size to 10 meters in the X direction, 5 meters in the Y direction, and 1 meter as width in Z direction. After it, adjust position as needed. Now that we have one collision shape, we can duplicate it. Duplicate the shape, move it to the other side, and then duplicate again. Use the snapping feature to rotate and position each one where you need it. Repeat this process to add more shapes and cover the area around the testing area. Once this is done, you'll have collision shapes around the testing area, which will be very helpful when you start working with test objects, especially when testing game characters. That's a wrap for today. I hope you found this video helpful and entertaining. If you're hungry for more, check out this one. I think you'll really enjoy it. Until next time, stay curious, keep exploring, and I'll catch you in the next one.